guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Summer Myers. I'm a homeschool mom of six kids, and on this channel we talk about all things homeschool because that's what I love. I love homeschool. And today I wanted to talk about Right Start Math Level B in particular. If you missed Right Start Level A, that was from last week, and I'll I'll link up a card or something. Um, but today we're talking about level B. I'm gonna be doing a flip through and in depth look at what a lesson looks like as well as manipulatives and why I love it and just, you know, talk about Right Start. So let's get started. So here is Right Start Mathematics level B and we're gonna flip through it. Mine is like falling apart. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do when my cover is totally destroyed, okay. So let's go ahead and do a flip through. It's laid out very similarly to level A, if you saw my video last week about that. So let's cover the objectives that will be in level B. It's separated by quarters, quarter one, two, three, and four. This mostly is a reference guide, so you can refer back to, okay, I need to talk about place value a little bit more, or where can I find about trading tens for a hundred or whatever. And you can say, oh, okay, well, we started talking about it in quarter one. Otherwise, this, this, doesn't really tell you very much. So numeration, let's start from the beginning. This is understanding number sense, and it's a little bit about place value. It's knowing and understanding how numbers are laid out and patterns in numbers. So being able to recognize one through 10, this is going back to a little bit of level A. You can enter quantities up to 100 on the abacus and recognize them and understanding them. This is all about abacus work, essentially. You'd be able to know and understand even in odd numbers up to 120. I like how Right Start does this because I don't think this is true for a lot of math programs, where they kind of are like, we'll stop at 100. So if you can recognize even in odd patterns up to 100, then you know, you're good, you know, feel free to pass go. I like how it go in right start, it goes back up to 120. It refers to 200. So if you're skip counting, they'll frequently say skip count from 200 to 300. So you go 210, 220, rather than just the traditional 10, 20, 30. Because at one point you get complacent, don't you? When you're talking about counting by, skip counting by 10, skip counting by fives, and it just becomes memory as opposed to understanding. and by forcing children to move outside of just the basic one through 100, it gives them a clear idea that patterns and numbers continue on all the way through and that it's not just the first 100 numbers. So let's talk about place value for a right start. Right start is probably the most famous for referring to numbers as groups of 10 and then the one. So if you were talking about the number 37, you would refer to it as three, 10, seven. And the reason being, English is very strange in the way it lays out numbers. You've got one through 10, and then instead of repeating the pattern, you have all these weird teen numbers. It goes 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and it's not, it's hard to hear the, the same kind of numbers. And then 20 comes, and we repeat the pattern for one through 10, 21, 22, 23. So you have this weird gap with the teen numbers. Not only that, when you break it down into talking about it in 3107, what you're doing is you're saying, this is three groups of 10. If you have to take 10 away, well, now you only have two groups of 10. So it gives them a clear idea and understanding of how the numbers are going to be manipulated in your mind. So not only does it help when you're learning how to count, it helps when you are computing numbers with addition and subtraction or even multiplication division later on. So it's giving them, referring back to a clear number sense. This is introduced in level A, it's briefly talked about in level B, and none of my kids have stuck with talking it the math way, that's what they refer to it as. 3107 is the math way of saying the number 37. And they usually, stop doing that you know fairly quickly i've never had a child continue on saying i need to talk about it as 3107 or 1102 or whatever they they always go back to referring to it in the regular number way they'll be able to trade 10 ones for 110 
uh, trade 10 tens for 100, 10 hundreds for 1,000. And they do this primarily through the abacus. There's also, <laughs> right, starts famous for its big triangle fractal worksheet. And that's introduced here in level B. And it's kind of a rite of passage. Uh, and that gives them a clear understanding of place value. It's a great activity. So we've got addition. This is combining parts of a whole circle. We talk about this briefly in level A, where you've got your part whole circle and you have your whole, and then you have your two add-ins that you add together to get to that whole. And showing those number relationships is continued on in subtraction. There are geometry lessons where you're talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. You're going to, you probably already know all of your shapes, but they're going to be talking about lines of symmetry and being able to fold them in half and getting a congruent shape and that sort of thing. Uh, measurement is also introduced towards the very end of the book, talking about centimeters, inches, you're gonna be measuring things around the house, that sort of thing. Fractions is also introduced. It just gives you an idea and gives them a introductory look at what fractions and what they do. Time, we talk about the clock more in this lesson and being able to tell and write the hours. You're gonna be doing half hour, you're gonna be counting by fives, skip counting by fives, which leads back to numeration. Money is also talked about, and this time you're gonna be talking about penny, nickel, dime, and quarter. There's also an introductory lesson into a calculator. Calculator work is, it's mostly just showing you how the buttons work, which you would think is intuitive, but you should have a lesson or two in every math course about how to use a calculator and how it works. Um, and so level B is where that's introduced. So those are the objectives. Let's take a look at, here is a list of things that are not included in the math set. The math set is so huge and big. It's like, oh my gosh, you still have more stuff. This is all household items like scissors, glue, crayons. I mean, it's stuff that you are going to have or have a, something very similar that you can use. So don't sweat that. Here is Joan Cotter's essay about what she thought, how she came up with this program. This details out 3107, talks about numbers. Uh, it's well worth a read. It's also available on their website to read. Here are some general thoughts about teaching math. This is excellent. I love this. Uh, and this is also, I think, available on their website. So even if you are not a right start using Right Start Math, I would absolutely read this anyway just to help you teach math. It's just really smart. Second edition, so just briefly I'm gonna say the second edition is well worth purchasing. The first edition I know is very, is available for very cheap on eBay. You can get it for a really good price, a really good deal. However, um, it is expanded. So the second edition is much more efficient in how it teaches its lessons. Things go a lot smoother, a lot quicker. I, it's absolutely worth getting. First edition's not gonna hurt you, but it's just something to think about. Here's how the daily lesson is broken down, but we're gonna go through that ourselves, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Here's our table of contents and how long lessons there are. There are 140 lessons, but, but caveat here, the first 11 are review. So if you're transitioning to Right Start from a different math curriculum, the review is basically what you're going to be doing in level A. You don't have to start from level A in order to get into level B. This review is very comprehensive and very thorough. If you are already in Right Start, you skip review. So the first 11 lessons, you get to like, ha ha, I don't have to do this, and you carry on. And I actually really like that. I like how this is set up, so it's not set up by week. So Monday you do this, Tuesday you do this, Thursday, whatever. Those programs tend to give me anxiety and guilt because frequently, something comes up, life happens, or we have something scheduled that day that means we don't do lessons that day or whatever. Right Start is very straightforward. You do a lesson a day. If you need to, you can do two lessons, three lessons, four lessons a day if they are just flying through it and there's no reason to stop and hold them back. If there's a lesson that is difficult, I will frequently expand it into one week where we just talk about the things that lesson talks about. We can just hang out for one lesson for an entire week if need be. So here are our review lessons. We're gonna skip ahead. 
So lesson 12, adding one. Let's go ahead and look at this one. So we have our objective here. This is what you're gonna be covering in your lesson. Here are the materials needed. And then here's your lesson for the day and then an explanation on the side. So for our explanation, this goes into detail about why it's taught this way or possibly, you know, maybe giving an extra hint of, well, maybe if your child is struggling, you can use, <laughs> if your child is struggling, you can use the abacus. It's never overwhelming. It's just little extra notes. At the beginning of each lesson starts with a warm up. They have lots of songs, not as many as level A, I would say, but you do sing them. So here they talk about yellow is the sun, which is this book. And you sing the song together. It's colorful, giving them a sense of number sense how to write the number, what it looks like on the abacus, what it looks like with tally sticks, gives them. I also wanna point out that it goes yellow is the sun, six is five and one. So you're already breaking the number down six into a group of five and one. And in level A, it's all about numeration and being able to understand what the number means and what it looks like as opposed to the actual symbol of six, of the number and level B continues on in that vein. It goes all the way to 10, 10 is five and five, and then we have it continuing on. The song kind of ends at 10, but we've got some more numbers with 20. Here is the music for Yellow is the Sun. I actually don't know how Yellow the Sun works like how it sounds i've never actually listened to it but if you don't want to just sing it on your own <laughs> you can play it on the piano they've also got guitar chords um, they also have an audio version that you can download online if you want to do it that way so there's that book so you have your warm-up you sing your yellow as the sun and then, then it looks like they've got some abacus work and then they combine that with the math balance and then you have your conclusion. If this lesson goes for five, 10 minutes and then we're done, I'll move on and I'll do the next lesson, no problem. If the lesson is taking me forever because I don't know, the game is taking a while or whatever, I'll stop at a 20 minute mark and say, you know what, that's enough for today. We'll come back and we'll pick up tomorrow. And Right Start gives you that ability to do that. It's all scripted out. So you can literally just read it word for word and any questions that are asked are put in brackets. So this is a teacher's guide. That's why it's black and white. This is sitting in front of you the entire time. They're not looking at this. They're looking at you and you are having a discussion about math with your child every day. That means it is rather more teacher intensive than other math curriculums. I personally prefer that because I think math should be discussed and talked about and played with and not just, you know, worksheet work that's independent and you sit by yourself and you do it. And then I just, I have a soapbox. I have a soapbox and I am not afraid to use it. So that is my preference. And level B is very much in that vein where you are sitting and talking about math with your kid, but it's scripted out so you don't feel like you're floundering, like you don't know what you're talking about. There's plenty of guides there. Let's see, um, let's reference a game now. Here we go, we've got practice. Here's a game, in fact, here's several games that you can play. And this happens sometimes where they're like, here, you play this game, and then you play this game, and then you play this game. No, I'm not gonna play four games in one day or three games in one day. I'll pick one and we'll do it. Uh, or if they need extra practice, we'll we'll you know divide it out into three different days and we'll play the games this way. But when it's referencing a game, what you're looking for is your math card games book. And then you can look up the game in your book and see how it is played. So let's take an example here is an addition it has a bunch of different varieties that you can use. So for whatever reason, you look at this game and you're like, well, that was boring. You can go back and you can pick a different one. You don't have to do what they suggest. And there's more games in here than the book actually uses. So that means if you need to do review, if you need to do more, 
this has more for you. So the games are broken up into an objective. So if you need practice, you can look at all the objectives and say, okay, good, this is what we're struggling with. The cards that you need, the number of players, the layout, and then the actual play of the game. Because I am teaching four of my kids with Right Start, if there's a game going on, I'll get three of them and I'll say, okay, you guys play this game and I'm gonna go work with a uh, little sister over here and we're gonna do her work. And they'll go and they'll play and it's great review for them and it's great bonding, sibling bonding time. And it's really helpful for the one that is learning that concept because they see older sisters or she can help younger sisters do the, the game and that's excellent teaching. So I love this for big families. I know a lot of people shy away with it because it is uh, teacher intensive, but I love that my kids all can play these games together and gain valuable knowledge and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. We like it. So that's the Math Card Games book. I like how it's also not super colorful. There is more worksheet work in level B than in level A. So now that we've kind of seen what level B looks like, what level B looks like, let's go ahead and take a look at the worksheets. Here's the workbook for level B. I'm gonna start in the middle to protect my daughter's privacy because she actually hasn't finished completing this book, uh, but it's we're about halfway, so we can look at it here. All of this is very gentle. It doesn't take longer than 10 minutes whenever a worksheet is assigned. There's a little bit of manipulation where you're like cutting things out and gluing things and using it. Not as much as in level A, but they do do that in level B. There's a little bit more writing, much more appropriate for a kindergarten first grader. This is also in the middle of the book too, so just as point of reference. So this is towards the end of level B and there's more writing here, so don't be turned off by all that. It's also not very colorful. There aren't any cute woodland animals or watercolor flowers or anything like that, but I appreciate that because I feel like those things can be rather distracting to children. So for my math program, I like it being a little more basic. Here's the math journal. Uh, they have this on every right start workbook it's basically just a grid to help um, form numbers i really like this for early writers because it gives them a clear space of this is where you write the number as opposed to a free line uh, and that way they can clearly write their own equations as opposed to having it all squished or all spread out it just gives them good spacing so they can understand where they're writing and what's coming from uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about, oh, here, they've got some sum practices. So for warm up at one point, you'll be doing two things of sum. So there is plenty of practice by way of actual worksheets. There is no drill and kill though. So it's not like you have to do all of this in one day. This is just two problems for your warm up, just to get your brain moving, get those numbers moving around in your head, and then you move on with your life which I really like. I don't like drill and kill workbooks. This is, this is more of my jam, more of my speed. Um, here is assessment. So frequently throughout the level of A, B, whatever you're doing, there'll be an assessment to tell you how you are doing. So let's take a look. This is the end of the year assessment. Let's take a look at that. Where you have a worksheet frequently two worksheets, and you can clearly see where they are struggling, what they're having problems with. And then you can go back and point a reference of the previous lessons that you've just done and do the games or redo the lesson or you know however strenuous it needs to be, you can easily do that based on the assessments. The assessments I would not say is like a test. It's more of just a 
for a lot of kids, it's just a review because they typically breathe through assessments. All of my kids, we've never struggled with assessments. They breeze through them and I makes me feel, okay, good. Now we can move on and try something new and different within the level. Uh, sometimes there's something that they've struggled with and I can go back and I say, okay, we need to play these games for a couple of days until we can move on and make sure that you are solid. And that's where the mastery comes in. You know, we talk about right start being spiral because it introduces a concept and then it sets it to the side. But there is mastery involved because they do not want you to move on until you've mastered the concept and you can sit in it for as long as you need to with the games or the worksheets. And that's well thought out and well laid out and different from other spiral programs that I have seen. And that's what that looks like. All right, so now that we have done a flip through and a review of the lesson, let's talk about what manipulatives are actually used in level B. I would highly, highly recommend that you just get the whole entire set. It's more cost effective and you're not gonna, it, they're good stuff, it's good quality stuff. There's no reason not to. However, if you are penny pinching, and you think you can pull from different places like Amazon or your local homeschool curriculum or consignment store or whatever, um, then the only thing that you do not use in level B is the drawing tools. So the drawing tools is the T-square as well as the goniometer and the, let's see, oh, the triangles. Um, so those things you do not need. Everything else, you use <laughs> and it's of good value and I have been able to use it in other areas of life too. So it's not like they're just sitting in a box never getting used and it's used progressively throughout all of the levels. Absolutely worth it. If you are struggling because of the price tag and I, I mama, I get it. I get it. Look on eBay, look at consignment homeschool stores, look on Facebook. The Facebook Right Start group is phenomenal. Very, very active. I'm active on it. And they talk you through lessons or whatever. They're super helpful. You should just look them up anyway. But frequently they will post people who are going to be selling their manipulative set or workbooks or whatever. So if that's something that you are interested in or looking for, you know, you can absolutely get it secondhand. I will say that if you are homeschooling multiple children, I would get two abacuses, not just one, get two. If you have a toddler, you should get another abacus. <laughs> not meaning you should get three, but you should have two abacuses so you can let the toddler play with one while you do school with the others or whatever. I would get two decks of the basic card deck as well uh, because there are a couple of games where you need to pull multiple cards out and then you use it for a couple of lessons. And if you've got multiple kids that you're playing with, and even if you don't, it's nice to just have a set for the long solitary game. It's nice to have just a set for going to the dump or whatever the games are that you're currently doing. And you can set those aside and say, here, I've got this deck set aside. And you don't have to spend time flipping through all the basic cards. I have found that to be helpful. If you're in the long hell, definitely buy two. And I think that's it as far as what I would double up on. Everything else I feel like would be okay. I will say the geared clock that Right Start Math uses, not my favorite clock. I prefer the Judy clock. In fact, I'll pull it out. So this is what Right Start has. It's from Le Learning Resources. And in fact, I have like three of these. <laughs> I have a bunch of these. But when you move this, it moves the hour hand along. So you can see exactly, okay, it's 4.30, um, even though it's not quite pointing to the four. So it works like a clock. It's got the gears in the back to make it do that. I am not a huge fan. Not a huge fan of this one. I prefer my Judy clock and it is totally worn to pieces. Um, and it kind of moves along. Not, not, not especially well. <laughs> do it especially well. However, I like being able to move both of these at the same time. Whereas the learning resources one, you can't, you can't, it'll break it. So you can only move one of the hands at, and even, no, maybe you can't even move, 
you can't you can't even move the hour hand you can only move the minute hand which is annoying if you're trying to like go all the way around a million times so that's probably my one critique with right start manipulatives i the judy clock is what i prefer to use just you know fyi i threw it out there age to start level b a lot of people assume that level b is they equate it with kindergarten level and I can see why, because they're introducing basic addition, basic subtraction. Not really a whole lot of subtraction, mostly basic addition. And you can absolutely start that if you've got an older kinder kid or somebody who's already very capable with math, meaning they know their numbers from one to 100, you could absolutely start in kindergarten. I never have because I typically take two years to go through level A. I'll start when they're about four and then that's not entirely true i've been starting them as soon as they turn five and all of my kids have winter birthdays so as soon as they start five in february and march or whatever their birthday is um, that's when i start level a and it takes us about a year and a half to get through and then we start level b and the reason being i like having that strong number sense foundation and i feel like we can get through the lessons quick and easy and it's good for their little bodies not to be stuck in a chair for that long <laughs> if you have an advanced learner who's really starving for math absolutely start them in level b there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with going with level a first and doing two three lessons a day and just getting through with it you know done in six months and then starting level b um you know that's something that's one way to do it and i've seen f families do that and be very successful with it level b i feel like is a solid program for first grade and i don't feel like my any child would be behind doing level b in first grade uh, level b i feel like is very solid for an older five six year old and that's usually where my kids are at when they do level b i have done another right start video about um, going through level A all the way up to level E, I believe. And I actually do a sit down lesson with one of my kids with level B. So if you're interested in seeing that, I'll link a card up there for that. And you can see and watch in real time how long a lesson takes and exactly what you do, if that's something you are interested in. Just thought I'd throw that out there. You can also see kind of the timeline of where Right Start starts and where it goes. So you can kind of see future planning and what you're transitioning to between level A and level B. So thoughts there to consider. So I'm gonna talk again about what I love about Right Start. And I've done a video, last week I talked about it, how much I love it in level A, and I've talked about it in other videos. But I'm gonna talk about it again. I'm not sponsored by Right Start. It's just something that we have used successfully for three years. We're going into our fourth year using it, and I love it. I love how it works for all learning styles and that is kinesthetic learning visual learning auditory learning i will say if you have a visual learner a lot of the warm-ups are geared toward preparing your child to do math mentally and that's with the number sense and manipulatives or whatever so frequently it'll ask you questions like you know can you skip count can you add five plus 10 or whatever. And if you have a visual learner, that might be something they struggle with. How, do not shy away from bringing stuff out or writing it down so they can visually see it. I have a couple of visual learners in my family and I did it with all of them where I wrote down a math problem and then they could spit it out easily to me. And and eventually they didn't need that anymore. So don't shy away from writing it down. You know, absolutely meet your child where they're at, whatever. And this holds true for any curriculum, mama. Any curriculum you use. If, you're, if they are not serving your child the way it needs to and you know how to tweak it to make it work for them, tweak it, tweak it. I love it because it is a mix of a spiral and mastery program where it lays down foundational skills for future things which means it introduces multiplication concepts all the way back in level a and b even though you're not actually tackling multiplication until c d and e but it's also mastery based in that it does not leave you hanging once it has shown you a concept 
it comes back to it in the warm-ups, in the games. If your child is struggling with a concept, absolutely set the curriculum aside and do a couple of games with them, pull out the manipulatives and work with them for a couple of days on it even. I mean, it's not even like, you don't have to, you can sit and play games for an entire month until they really click and connect. And I'd absolutely recommend that. And that's what I love about Right Start is that it gives you the tools necessary to do that. If you missed level A and you're kind of waffling between the two, absolutely check out my video from last week. I'll have that linked down below and I'll throw a card. And I think that's it. I think I talked myself out. I hope that was helpful. If it was, like, subscribe. Talk to me about Right Start. Is that something you are interested in? If you have questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I answer all of them. I like talking about Right Start program. And if you are confused or worried, I'm happy to answer those. Um, or if you really love Right Start, tell us why. Or if you're using a different math curriculum and you think I'm completely wrong, totally valid. I'd love to argue with you. So <laughs> send me a comment down below. All right, take it easy, everybody. Bye.